I suck at reading books. Every time I'll see something online about a new book, I'll get excited by it, and then I'll go out on my way to get that book, and I'll even read a few pages. All of that only for me to stop reading it. But it wasn't always like this. See, just like everyone else, I had to read at school. In fact, I would read outside all of what was in my syllabus or the curriculum. So it wasn't like I was a complete stranger to reading. But as I grew up, something changed. I just simply stopped reading. Actually, let me rephrase that. I stopped reading books. It wasn't like I stopped reading altogether. I would read a lot of articles on the internet um, and I'd still be consuming a lot of information through podcasts, videos, and even audiobooks. But sitting down with a hard copy like this physically and going through the pages and finishing a book is something that I haven't done in ages. And it seems like I'm not the only one. I mean, more, fewer and fewer people are reading for pleasure now. One in three U.S. high school seniors did not read a book. But at the same time, we're all reading less novels. We are all too often on our social media. Ah, uh, 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 I, I don't read books. From the Pew Research Center, almost one in four Americans has not read a book in the past year. I find these statistics sad and surprising to you. Uh, not surprising, but sad uh, and scary. Now, this wouldn't have been a big problem because, you know, people fall out of habits all the time. But our culture seems to be obsessed with the idea of reading books. Go to any productivity gurus, YouTube, or read through any social media outlets. And they'll have you believe that everything wrong with this world is because we don't read enough. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the premise. For me, it's more about the content and not the medium. And while books no longer are the single source of intellectual content, there's still something about picking up, you know, a physical copy, going through the pages and closing it shut when you're done. That's a feeling that I haven't had in ages. So I've decided that I will be reading every day for the month of January and I'll finish at least one book. Now, for a lot of you, it may sound very simple, but for someone whose last complete finished book was from the Harry Potter series 15 years ago, it's not gonna be that easy. I have a collection of bookmarks, just books, books I'm reading, reading books, and I need to make videos on them, so I need to keep marks. This is Salman Sadiq. He is an educational content creator from Bangladesh with millions of subscribers and 90% of his videos has the backdrop of books. So I decided to ask him for a few tips because he looks like someone who'd know a thing or two about books. If you can read multiple books at the same time, so you can always change your needs. So sometimes I'm reading some hardcore non-fiction then I can suddenly switch to some poetry books. That really helps you change your palette and that definitely helps. So if I were to start from your standpoint, I would suggest target four books, one per week. Okay. And I would tell you, it would be it would be an interesting challenge if you picked four books from four genres. Okay, so you've just you, you've genres. just upped upped my my ante. So I think I will accept <laughs> the challenge. Okay, let's let's do four. And so these are the books that I chose. Go Figure by The Economist. I chose this book because each chapter was only a few pages, and it was overall very digestible. The Will Smith book, which you saw earlier, Grit by Angela Duckworth. Your Head is a Houseboat by Campbell Walker, who's also one of my favorite creators. Then it was time to read. The first few days were awesome. I was charged up. I read when I woke up, I read when I ate, I read when I had downtime, I read whenever I could. But it soon became unsustainable, so I had to allocate a slot to read books only at night. To wake up in the morning, I'm gonna freshen up, I'm gonna go to my reading spot, and I'm gonna spend like half an hour, an hour reading books. There are many ideas I'm gonna discuss that there aren't people around me for me wow. to discuss. It's not like having not enough friends to talk about. Like, friends are there for emotional sure. support to know about, to be vulnerable, to share your ideas. But not all ideas that you find interesting. They are also going to find yeah, interest. Yeah. And finally, finishing a book, the task of finishing a damn yeah. book, that is hugely worth so. So during one of the nights, we just put our daughter to sleep. That's when I usually 
pick up my book and have a read. My wife decided to join and just sit beside me and after I'd read a chapter she'd asked me what I had just read. It was about the difference between comets, asteroids and meteor and I had just explained it to her what the difference were and funnily enough we had just finished watching uh, Don't Look Up so it was somewhat relevant. Now if I listened to a podcast instead that moment probably wouldn't have happened. And little moments like that where I could retain memory or just simply share it with someone is why I started enjoying reading a bit more. And after a month of doing all that, I finished a grand total of zero books. I can explain. There are a few reasons why I failed. Number one, I have the reading pace of a snail. So even the most basic books still felt like effort to me this book you know the reason why i chose this is because a couple of pages is one chapter it's basically like an explainer book by the economist so i thought this would this would be an easy finish but because my reading pace is so slow i struggled to get through multiple chapters on the same day and because i hadn't set a kpi i wasn't in any sort of rush number two I allocated the time to read as the last item of my day. So I would have a grueling day of work and taking care of the kid and doing this and doing that and then I'd leave me reading the book as the final task of the day. And that's what it felt like, a task. It almost became a chore on some nights. And finally, I tried reading multiple books at once. Now you see, while I enjoyed reading new books, the problem was that if I wanted to finish one book, I needed to read just that because I only got so much time to read during the day. So, was it all pointless? Not really. First of all, I managed to read all 30 days, which in itself was a huge personal milestone. I was also very close to finishing one of the books. It also helped me to start the other books, which I hope to finish in the coming months. And because of this challenge, I'm more interested in reading books for the rest of the year now. Reading daily has also helped me write better and I'm sure it's been helping me on Wordle too. And perhaps more importantly, I think I've finally built a habit of reading books. So I was watching this video by Max Joseph. Uh, it was a documentary about bookstores. And there he asked the question, like how many books does he read in a year? And when I thought about that, for me, it was just one and even then it wasn't a physical book it was an audiobook last year as a south asian male if i'm lucky i have another 50 odd years to live with the current pace that i'm going that's 50 more books for me ever 50 more books for the rest of my life it's, it's crazy just to think about it like what if somebody told me i only have 50 movies that i can watch or 50 songs that i can listen to for the rest of my life and that prompted me to do this and at least get into the habit i don't know what will happen towards the end of the year but at least through this experiment i found out that reading books doesn't have to be a chore and that i can actually enjoy it so it's just a habit that anyone can get and i, I just wish i started that earlier but i think i have no regrets the optimism they need to start reading the books is there are only 500 to 1000 books that are classic or manageable or the things that you actually need to cover and right. 500 to 1000 books is not that much in your entire life mm -hmm. or like 20 years of your career right mm -hmm. so if you think about it you're never too late even if you're if you're in your 40s you can still cover those essential 500 books never too late. I don't know if I'll be able to get through the classics and the mandatory 500, but I do know that all this has prompted me to take some time to read. Not because of a stupid meme or a fear-mongering TV show, but because I know I'll be looking forward to reading 30 minutes a day. Because I'll want to. I'm hoping to do another follow-up video at the end of the year to see how well I hold on to this habit. But for now, I'll leave you with this. A comet is big and icy, asteroid is big and rocky, and meteors are small bits of debris burning up in the Earth's atmosphere in a final blaze of glory.